It's 11 p.m. I accidentally took a three hour nap this afternoon and I just drank some very caffeinated tea, so uh, let's make a mock-up. Hi everyone, so in today's edition of Mock-Up Monday, Mock-Up Mayhem, Mock-Up Madness, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna call this, I made a mock-up of this pattern right here, which is Simplicity 8876, right here, it's this cute little sheath dress, uh, and I was really drawn to it because of the pockets, and overall, I think it went pretty well. Um, so if you're interested in seeing the process of how I made and made some little alterations to this dress, then go ahead and keep on watching. So the pattern I'm going to be working with today is Simplicity S8876. It is this cute little sheath dress and it has this really interesting pocket detail, which is what drew me to it. I'm going to be making this V dress because I really don't think it's going to be worth it to try to make this little wrap. Also, I don't want to waste any fabric on something that I don't need to be doing. Just looking at the pattern, I'm, I'm interested in how these pockets work out. I think those are going to be fun. I'm also noticing there's a little drawing of a belt, but I don't see anything about needing belt notions for this, so I don't know if that's actually part of the pattern or if they just kind of added this into the original sketch or something. I don't know. I also am going to be lining the bodice because I think that's how they want the boning to be attached. And speaking of boning, I do not have any, but you know what I do have somewhere in my uh, never-ending closet? zip ties, very large zip ties. So I think I will be using those instead of boning. I've heard that's a uh, decent uh, cost efficient hack for uh, corsets and stuff. It's basically the same thing as plastic boning anyway. Uh, also, I will be grading this up to a size 20 uh, because I'm looking at the ease on the back. So you have your measurements and then you have the uh, finished bust measurements. Um, and it looks like there's gonna be about an inch and a half of ease um, around the bust and probably around the waist and I probably could squeeze into a size 18 which is the upper limit of this one uh, but just to be on the safe side I'm going to cut it up to a 20 because it's probably going to be a case of I could fit in a size 18 but I might not be able to sit down in a size 18 so I'll just scale this up to a 20 really quickly um, yeah let me get some pattern pieces cut out of here so just a quick note before I, I get into everything, I'm not going to be doing this because I'm not going to be making it, but the stole on A, which is this kind of shawl scarf looking thing, is in two parts. So you have to assemble the pattern before you cut it out. And the way that they've done it is really smart. I like how they did it, where you have these four little symbols, these little like targets, um, and you match those up for 8A with piece eight. And luckily tissue paper is very transparent, so you can see just directly through it. So you just line those up real quick. Make sure they're nice and aligned. You can also check against these printed lines and then you just tape them together, cut the whole thing out, and then there you go. Okay, so um, everything looks pretty straightforward, real simple so far. I don't think this is gonna be particularly difficult to put together, but I did want to point out real quickly that piece one, which is the bodice front, does have two separate pieces based on what size you need. So just double check, make sure you are using the correct size and cutting out the correct size for the pattern you're using. This is also one of those that the uh, t sizes 10 and 12 are on a different pattern piece than 14, 16, 18. So it's your smaller sizes and then your larger size. Which also, just to confirm, there is no belt pattern in here, which matches up with the kind of technical drawings on the back of the envelope and also with the technical drawings on the pattern instructions. Um, but there is one on the artistic rendition of the pattern. Uh, so I don't know if maybe there was one originally and it just got kind of lost time or they just assumed that you would know how to make a matching belt because honestly it's really not that difficult. I've made a couple and uh, it's pretty easy to figure out. You just sew a tube, make a point at one end, sew a buckle on it. It's, it's not that difficult. Uh, one of the only things that is kind of unusual for this pattern is the skirt front is not cut on the fold of the fabric and that is because if you look closely there is a little vent in the front and that's what helps you to walk so I don't think there's one in the back so the vent is in the front for this one so it has a little a little slit and a little thing in it to allow you to make that vent uh, so now I'm gonna get all this cut out of my fabric all right, so here are all the pieces laid out. Now, looking at the instructions, the instructions want you to do some weird kind of folding and, and arranging things to try to make everything fit. This fits just fine. That pink highlighter over there is actually at the two and a half yard mark. 
Um, so the everything here is laid out for the main piece, except I do need a second one of this, what is that, piece four? Um, I do need a second one of those, but I can absolutely definitely fit that in with that extra um, half-ish yard left over. Um, I am going to go ahead and cut the lining fabric out of the same material. Um, the, they ask for uh, three yards to do the actual fashion fabric for view B and then another three quarters of a yard to do the lining. I really don't think I'm going to need that full three and a quarter yards, but I will go ahead and measure that once everything's cut out just for you to know. Also on the bodice pieces, there's no line to cut and elongate to make the bodice piece longer. Uh, so I'm just going to do this as is and see what happens. And I might wind up a look looking a little uh, Jane Mansfield-ish, but you know what? We're going to roll with it. Also, one last thing, in order to make some of these pocket and flat pieces fit, I did have to bump them up onto the salvage a little bit, which if you're cutting on a proper size 18, you shouldn't have to worry about. Everything should fit nicely, but because I am grading it up a little bit larger, I had to bump it up, but it's only a little bit on the salvage, and all of that should be hidden within the seam allowance. But again, if you're going to be pre-washing this fabric, especially if it's, you know, a cotton fabric or something like that, that would shrink. Just kind of be aware you may need that extra, you know, kind of three or extra yard and a half of fabric to make everything fit um but yeah just things to be aware of all right so just wanted to show you what i had left over real quick now this pink highlighter is right on the three and a quarter yard mark and i just double checked made sure i cut everything out that i need of my main fabric and my lining and i did so i'm good to go so you know if you want to save a little bit of money you don't necessarily need the three and three quarter yards the, the three and one quarter will be just fine also another note, real quick, I'm not cutting out interfacing because I don't really want to waste my interfacing on a mock-up and I don't need this to actually have long-term support and structure because I'm just trying this on for the video. I'm also going to be saving some of these bigger pieces from amongst all the piecing and patterning uh, to make casing for my... Uh, boning because I peeked ahead in the instructions and the boning is installed by sewing the casing onto different parts of the garment instead of like folding over the seam allowance and sliding it up in there. So I have to make my own boning casing because my hardware store's tie boning does not come with casing. All right, so I have all of my pieces cut out. I have all of my darts and pleats and marks uh, marked on all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew all of my darts and all of my pleats. Um, just because I know I'm eventually going to have to do it and I like doing all of that all at once. So all of the darts on the skirt, the pleats on the skirt, the darts on the bodice, both on the main and also the lining of the bodice, I'm going to go ahead and do that and get that out of the way real quick. Um, pretty simple. I really don't think you need me to expressly show how to do that. So when you're sewing this front bodice piece, if you do this big kind of top dart first, just be aware that the fabric is going to have a little bit of a tendency to fold over. So just make sure that you hold that and pull that out of the way before you sew these darts. Or you could probably sew these darts first and it'll fix that. And again, if you see me using some weird colored thread, that's just me trying to use up my uh, collection of misfit bobbins. So uh, yeah, if you see some weird coloring stuff going on, that's, that's it. <laughs> Now the bodice pieces go together just about how you would expect. So you're going to take the main piece and then right sides together, so uh, the back piece on at the side seams, you're going to leave the back seam open because that's where the zipper goes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that on both the main fabric and also on the lining. We're not going to do anything with the lining until another couple of steps down, but while I'm here doing it, might as well get it out of the way. So this goes together really simply, straightforward, exactly how you think it would. All right, so now we're moving on to the skirt. So I have the front panels here. This is the one with the little swooshy swoosh up there for the pockets. So now what we're gonna do is seam these right sides together and we're gonna stitch from the top all the way to the bottom. And if you'll notice, you may be able to see, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a circle there. There's a circle in the mark. We're gonna stop there. Um, so the instructions actually, if you start at this seam and then go up, I'm gonna start at the top and then make its way down. Um, so I'm going to sew from here all the way down, stopping at that dot. Then I'm going to press everything open and I'm also gonna kind of follow this. I'll show you when I get there. Okay, so here's a little bit what I was talking about of what the directions are telling you to do. So here is that seam that we just did and I press that open and I press this open all the way down here. Now the instructions, I, I could have sworn they said based from here down uh, just to make sure that this turns nicely. I can't find that in the instructions now. Maybe I made it up, who knows. But point is, I turned it uh, this way, and now what you do is you turn 
this under and I've already pressed it so it's going to lay pretty nice so we turn the seam kind of under itself and then we're going to stitch a quarter inch away from this fold and that's going to finish the slit nicely. And here is what that looks like when it's finished. So we have, hopefully you can see this kind of bound edge right here. So now what I'm going to do um, at this point, just because I think it'll make my life a little bit easier later, is I'm going to mark where my hem's going to be. So the pattern calls for a two inch hem and I'm going to make a rolled hem. So what I'm going to do is take my handy dandy little ruler and I'm going to make a mark one inch up from the hem where it is now. And I'm going to make a line there. That is where I'm going to fold over by half an inch so that you know I have a nice finished rolled hem. And then I'm going to make a mark or a series of marks four inches, four inches up from the bottom so that once all of that is said and done, I can roll it up again and then I will have a nice two inch hem. Or I can make a one inch mark and then a three inch mark on top of that because one plus three is four. I promise I have a bachelor's degree in science too. All right, so now we're going to move on to the pockets. So the first piece we're going to work with is piece four. This is the flap. Um, now, if you go read in the directions, it talks about having uh, a facing and the fabric and the interfacing. So if you look here, it says cut four of fabric. So that second set of the fabric becomes the facing. So the instructions aren't super clear on that. And unless you've done something like this before, you probably would be a little bit confused. So just remember the second set of this becomes the facing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our facing piece and our uh, proper piece, which we're going to pretend I put interfacing on this side, uh, and we are going to sew them to right sides together along this curve. Um, so just make sure that you have two opposite pieces. Uh, sometimes when you reach this point where you have um, kind of the same shaped pieces cut out of the same fabric, it can get a little bit confusing and you might get a little turned around, but just make sure that whatever you do, you have mirror pieces and you should be fine. So these are the pieces I pretended to put interfacing on, so we'll pretend there's interfacing there, and right sides together, sew them along this curve, then we're going to clip the curve, and then we're going to come back to talk about what we do in the second part of this step. Alright, so now we have our pieces sewn and cut. There's no kind of rhyme or rhythm to this, you just make cuts to make it. But anyway, so now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this right side out. So this is the interface side, this is the non-interface side, and we're going to flip this right side out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to understitch. And what we mean by that is you are going to kind of open this up, feed it through your machine, and you're going to sew the seam allowance to the side that is not interfaced. So this is the facing side, not the interfaced side. Um, this the whole part is a little complicated and not worded super clearly. I just spent like 10 minutes trying to construct, basically construct the rest of the skirt to make sure we're doing this right, but yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew the seam allowance down to the facing side, so the non-interfaced side. Um, and then once that's done, it's going to look something like this. So here's the facing, here's the going to be the loose floppy side, and that's going to wind up on the inside that no one's going to see, which is why we're putting this line of stitching here to make sure that we don't see stitching on the outside, which is the interfaced side. So this is going to be the more stiff, in theory, nicer looking side. So when you're applying your interfacing, make sure you're putting the interfacing on the nicer side. So if you have a, a pattern or a print or something on the fabric, make sure that it's arranged a little bit nicer on the interfacing side. Now when I'm doing my understitching, I usually don't pin it and I like to put it underneath the needle and I like to kind of pull the, the seam apart so that I make sure that I'm not like bunching it up kind of underneath itself. I'm making sure that it's nice and as even as it can be. So I'm going to pull this apart a little bit, make sure I'm, I'm pressing the flaps down and just so. And I'm aiming for an eighth of an inch or less away from the seam line. So when I get close to the end, I'm going to make sure that this next piece gets pressed over. Going. And this, this part is going to take a little bit of time, especially on a curved seam like this. So just go slow, make sure you're not rushing through it, because this is a little bit of a pain to undo and redo. Also, did I set up this shot just so you could see my sparkly nails? 
Maybe. So now we're going to move on to actually assembling the pocket. So I've gone ahead and the instructions recommend that you baste this shut after you give it a really nice thorough pressing. So I've gone ahead and done that. So this is basted together. So now I'm like, I kind of worked through this and I'm like 95% sure this is how they want you to do it. Um, so here we have the top of the skirt. Here's where the waist is. Here's where the pocket's going to go. So the first thing we're going to do is take this piece that we just put together. You'll notice how I basted it. And this is the understitched side. So that's going to go down. So the instructions say put the facing piece down. Um, not the interfacing piece down, the facing piece down. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to base this and I believe we're going to base across the top, across this curve, and then down the side. So we're going to base that together real quick and then we're going to add in the next piece. So here this is all put on and I also took this opportunity to baste across the top to make sure the pleats stay pressed in the way that they were supposed to. I'm sure that was an instruction somewhere earlier that I just couldn't be bothered to read or do. So next we're going to move on and we are going to do step 13 if you're following along. And we are going to take piece number five, uh, which is, what is this? The pocket facing. And we are going to right sides together, matching up big uh, circles and little circles, is we're going to pin this there on both sides go and we are going to sew and we're going to sew for real this time just across this top curve right there all right so don't worry about this don't worry about this yet just do this all right and then i believe right after that we're going to clip it and understitch it so i'm going to uh, clip that right after and then i'm going to show you how to understitch it all right, so here we have the front of the skirt sewn on. I've gone ahead and clipped this seam. So now what I'm going to do is take just this facing piece, the pocket facing piece, this is piece number five. Yeah, just piece number five. I'm going to pull that up and I am going to understitch all along here. I'm going to do this from the underside because I've already clipped it and this way I can make sure that all of the seam allowance is getting sewn up and I'm not accidentally going to skip over part of it because it is in pieces now that we've clipped it. So I'm going to sew that and then I'm going to show you what that looks like when it's done. All right, so here we have the understitching done. Light. So if you, you might be able to see the shadows might get in the own way, but this first kind of indentation line is the actual seam line. Um, and then this red line is the understitching line. So now when we go to turn this in and give it a good press, that understitching is going to make sure that we don't see that seam line and this is going to look nice and seamless. So now I'm going to take this over to my iron. I'm going to give it a really good press and then we're going to move on to the next step. Oh, you're going to help me? You're going to help me do this next part? Thank you. All right, so I have a, a little helper right here. So if you see an ear or a tail or a cat lie down in the middle of everything, do not be alarmed. All right, so the next step that we did was, uh, after we understitched, we turned this to the inside. So now we're looking at the inside of the skirt and a uh, cat. So we're looking at the inside of the skirt. So now we're going to take piece number six. Lils, if you make this unsteady, I'm not gonna be happy. So now, after, while you're fighting off vicious mountain lions, uh -huh, we're going to take piece number six, and now we're going to attach that. So you're going to blah, pay attention to where these notches are, because the round, like, front round curved edge is going to get sewn onto here. Thank you. When she decides it's time to be pet, it's time to be pet. Oh, you want to rub your face on the ukulele? Okay, you do that for a little bit. So now, matching up large dots and small dots, we are going to kind of finagle this together. It's not going to go together perfectly flat, but that's okay, because it's going to go on a hip, which is round, and it's a pocket, which in theory you'd want to put things into, so you wouldn't want it super flat. You want a little bit of room there. Okay. So we're going to pin that, and we are going to sew all along this curved edge right here. So we're gonna pick this up and we're going to sew 
Oh, thank you. You're my pattern weight today? Thank you. All right, so hopefully I got out what you were supposed to do before I was rudely interrupted. So I sewed and I made myself a little pouch along here. So now that this is done, the next thing we're going to do is turn this right side out. And we're going to kind of form, form the pocket again. And this time, now we have almost a full pocket. So we're going to match up this side with all of the things from underneath and we're going to pin that and sew that down. The instructions say that you can baste this and also we're going to take this top section right here, find where it wants to lay nicely and also baste that. So now we're going to baste across here and then here on both sides and then I'm pretty sure the front of the skirt is finished. And here is what that looks like when it's done. So we have our functional pockets, real pockets, so exciting. Um, so now the next step is to take the skirt back and we're going to sew each back piece up the side seam. We're not gonna do the center back seam yet, just these side seams. All right, so the instructions don't actually tell you when to sew up the back seam. Um, they tell you to attach the bodice to the skirt, which is what I'm going to do next. Then they tell you to install the zipper, like the instructions of the zipper tell you to do it. And then we talk about going into the boning and working on the lining. So I just sewed up the back seam of the zipper or of the skirt all the way up to the notch, which is usually where the zipper should reach. Um, mostly because I just want to get a rough try on tonight before I move forward with anything else. So next thing I'm going to do is sew on the bodice to the skirt, just right sides together, quick once around. Um, and I think that's gonna be my stopping point for the night. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. Um, I can tell this is definitely gonna be a little big in the back, so um, might have to, have to do some darts like right there, but we'll see once I get all the boning on. I did have to pin this up to my bra because there's nothing really holding it up. Um, the pockets are interesting. Uh, they do kind of tend to want to flap out a little bit, so I might have to like tack this underneath, just kind of tack it to make sure it doesn't flip out, because especially up here, it wants to stay kind of flipped out. Um, let's see, can I hold my phone? Yes, I can hold my phone in these pockets, so they are 21st century friendly. Um, let's see. You see, normally this kind of thing I would fix when I put the zipper in, so I'll probably at some point give my boyfriend in here, sorry, fiance, in here to help me kind of make alterations and mark things to see if I can get this to fit relatively easily. Um, let's see, right now these side seams are at my sides. The bodice matched up to the skirt really, really well. Um, you can see this dart, this inner rose dart matches up with the pleat in the front. That's really nice. Um, I think also the darts in the back match up kind of really nice. So that is 10 out of 10 A plus patterning. So while I'm thinking about this and kind of playing around with this, I think my best course of action is to actually take in these back darts a little bit more because everything here kind of fits. Strangely enough, this is too low for my natural waist. I think that's the first time I've ever had a commercial pattern fit lower than my natural waistline, which I don't know if I just have this, you know, lower than it's supposed to be or what, but I think if I take in these two darts in the back, it's going to reduce the waistline by a little bit and it's going to force it to sit a little higher up on my waist. And I think that's going to give me a little bit more of a shape and it's going to be a little bit more flattering because as it stands right now, it's not very flattering. I don't, I don't feel particularly good in it, but I think there's potential here and I think there can be some adjustments made to make it better. All right, so now we're getting started with the boning channels. Now, mine did not come with casing, um, so I had to make my own, so I just kind of took some two-inch strips. I did not cut these on the bias because I don't really care. I don't really want them to, like, stretch and pull, so I just did them as is. Um, so I cut two inch strips, folded them in half, sewed them with a half inch seam allowance, and then kind of trimmed away. I was going to kind of flip these right side out and make them nice and pretty and look good, but it's just not happening today. And you know what? Life is about learning when to choose your battles, and I don't want to choose this one. So now I'm getting the boning casings pinned on, and the instructions have you do them on this back dart. So you're going to sew 
over the start, then you are going to sew another channel on this side seam right here, and then another one on, I believe it is the centermost. Yeah, so this dart closest to the center. Um, so I'm just going to take my channel or my casings and I'm going to put them on and you see here I have them kind of just pinned down and what I'm going to do is just kind of stitch. Uh, I'm going to do the first one within the seam allowance and then I'm going to do the second line of stitching very close to the edge here to make sure that I have enough room to get my quarter inch boning threaded through here. All right, so I'm going to get this sewn on and uh, get some boning trimmed down and I'll show you where we're at. All right, so here we have the finished lining pieces. So this is what it looks like on the right side of the fabric. So you'll see I have these two uh, lines of stitching uh, equidistant, as close as I can be away from each other on the outside. Here's what it looks like on the inside. So all of this is going to get covered. This is going to get hidden within the uh, main fabric. So now I'm going to take my hyper tough 14 inch cable ties um, and you know what, I'm going to take sticks out and I'm going to start cutting them to length. And they're not super like structured and rigid and supportive, but you know what, this, this doesn't need spiral steel, it just needs something to help hold the shape up a little bit. And even without the boning in it, just adding this little bit of extra support with the boning casing does kind of help the garment keep its shape a little bit better. So I'm not worried too much about this not being super, you know, stiff. Sorry, I haven't eaten much today. My brain is like pudding. All right, so now I've gone ahead and put the boning in. Uh, so I trimmed the boning down so that I have a decent amount of room on either side for ideally a five eighths, five eighths of an inch seam allowance on either side so that when I sew, I don't have to worry about accidentally sewing through the boning. So all of my boning is in, nice and rigid and structured and all that good stuff. So now the instructions say to sew a line five eighths of an inch along the bottom of this and then take that and fold it up and then press it there. Um, and that's just kind of setting it up so that we can finish the inside nicely once we get the lining installed in the bodice. All right, so I talked a little bit last night about the fit of this and how it doesn't really fit. And um, I talked about messing with some darts and doing some stuff in there. Um, I decided I'm not gonna do that mostly because I'm lazy. Um, and I think what I decided is I'm just going to um, kind of move the zipper where I need it to be to make things fit right. That usually works for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, which means I'm not going to worry about any of the steps relating to um, like messing with the zipper and finishing things nice around the zipper. So I'm actually going to skip ahead and jump to attaching the lining to the bodice. So this is going to get sewn right sides together, matching up, you know, the center and seams and all that good stuff to the bodice. Um, and then I'm going to understitch it and then turn the lining to the inside of the bodice. And I think we're functionally done at that point. There's still a couple little like tacking things and then I'm gonna do the zipper and, oh, the hem, I still have to do the hem. Yeah. Also wanted to zoom in and show you that on this folded edge on the bottom of the lining, the instructions did say to go ahead and make some little slits um, and that just helps everything lie nicely since, you know, three dimensional, two dimensional shapes, all that good stuff. So I did that and it uh, it does lay much, much nicer than it did before I snipped them. So yeah, go ahead, do that. So now we're moving on to the understitching. Uh, now the understitching doesn't need to be 100% continuous. Like if you have little gaps that aren't matched up perfectly, you're gonna be fine. So if you kind of cut this seam a little close to the boning and you don't wanna risk sewing over that again, you can just kind of pick up your needle, move and then resume again and you'll be fine. All right, so here we have the properly understitched and pressed bodice. But while I was at the iron, I also decided to go ahead and press the hem so that I can go ahead and get that done. Should I wait until I wear this and then, you know, get it properly marked and all that to make sure that it's an even distance from the ground all the way around? Yes. Am I going to do that? No. Why? Because I'm lazy. 
Um, so the instructions kind of talk a little bit about how to nicely finish this hem um, without having any raw edges showing. And basically what I think it's trying to get you to do so remember how earlier we pressed this flap open and for normally for a hem you would just kind of turn this up but then that would leave a little raw edge peeking through um, and even if you rolled it up uh, you would have a little raw edge peeking through right here which in my experience is kind of miserable to work with and it will eventually fray if you wash the garment um, so I think what the instructions are having you do is instead of kind of rolling it up that way it wants you to open this back up roll it up in here, and then fold this back open. So then if you roll it up again, you don't have any raw edges sticking out here. Um, so that's basically what I did is I folded that in and then I rolled it up to create my grand total of two inches off the length, so a one and a half inch hem. So now I'm going to sew this all the way around and then I'm gonna fight with the zipper probably. While I'm thinking about it, the instructions do kind of explicitly say to hand do the hem, uh, which I agree with because if memory serves me right, there I don't think there's any like visible lines of stitching on the outside of this garment at all. So with that in mind, it might look a little weird to have, you know, no lines of stitching anywhere and then one across the hem. Um, so if you, if that's something that you care about or something that concerns you, then yeah, go ahead and hand stitch this hem down, which it's not particularly long. It's not like we're doing a circle skirt or a hundred inch long rectangle skirt here. Um, so this would not take a particularly long time and this wouldn't be extraordinarily tedious. Um, so yeah, go ahead and consider doing your, uh, hand done hem. Which also another step that I'm kind of skipping over because I don't want to be bothered is attaching the bottom of the lining to the bodice. Um, so the instructions, I, I think they do, I, I didn't look at it too closely because I'm not following the instructions, but from what I understand is um, you want to make sure that this seam allowance from attaching the skirt to the bodice is pressed up into the bodice so that when you fold this down, you can just sew the lining to the seam allowance um, and it will one, hide the seam allowance so you don't see it so it looks neater and it makes it stronger because you're not going to be rubbing against it all the time. And if you sew this to the seam allowance, you're not going to have any stitch lines on the outside of the garment on the waist. All right, so aside from the zipper here, we essentially have a finished dress. Um, it's a little loose up top, I think a quick dart right there would fix that. So just a quick little dart right there would bring that top in and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, as you can see the back, I had to take it in by a, a decent amount <laughs> on each side. That's probably like two inches of fabric on each side, so four inches all around um, to get it to fit. That being said, if I pretty much if I just take this entire back seam in by, you know, a two inch seam allowance, this should fit very well. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised. The the bones, it almost feels like the side seams are a little long. I mean, I would personally definitely need some sort of dart up here at the top of the bust, and I think that would fix a lot of fitting issues, and I think if I could find a way to do it under the armpit, it wouldn't even be noticeable. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised. I was really expecting to not like this, but yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. Black underwear with muslin was a choice. I feel like it's kind of the law of Sam sewing projects is that I hate any sort of skirt until you get the hem in. Once the hem's in, I like it, but before that, uh, uh But yeah, I'm gonna get some dinner to get some brain food in me, and then I'm gonna do the zipper, and then I think we're done. All right, so here we have the dress fully, fully done as the instructions kind of, sort of, say. Um, I just basted a zipper in the back. I did not properly, fully install it, because as I mentioned before in my previous kind of mock-up Monday video, I do plan on ripping out and recycling a lot of the zippers that I'm using, so I don't want to install it super, super heavy duty and just create more of a headache for myself when I have to take it apart again. Um, so it's just basted in there real quick. Um, I did go ahead and kind of move everything, take everything in by two inches on each side with the zipper, and I think that leaves a much better fit. 
Um, I, with that information, I probably did not need to grade up to a size 20. I probably would have been fine on a size 18, which when I measured, my waist measurement was 35. Uh, so do with that information what you will. I even put on Spanx for y'all. I don't know if you can really tell from your angle, but there's a little bit of a of a gaping problem here, which considering I am five foot eight and when I wear heels I'm close to six feet tall, I don't think I'll really have to worry about anybody seeing directly down into my business, but um, that is that is a thing. Which is kind of weird because the way that this bodice is patterned has that very like 1940s almost like conical shape to the bust, which makes me think, and when you first are doing the darts and you're first putting it together before you get the boning in, it kind of makes you think that that top is going to flatten down over your bust. Um, but I don't know if I just don't have the correct proportions for this silhouette, but if I wanted to add a dart in here, I probably would do it somewhere around here so that the point matches up with this side dart point, and it also should line up with this dart in here. So maybe I will do that for whenever I do the grand reveal tomorrow. I don't know, maybe I'll just pin it because again, I'm just pinning a lot of things because I'm kind of lazy. I'm uh, kind of phoning it in right now. But yeah, adding two small darts right at the top really kind of holds things in. It makes me feel a lot more secure. All right, so now that I have my bra straps back on and my boobs are like actually supported and not drooping, um, it fits a lot better. It's still kind of, you see, the problem with that is it's a strapless dress, so I can't wear bra straps with it or you'll see the bra straps, but I almost kind of feel like I want to put a buttonhole here and then maybe do like a, a neck, like a tie around the neck. Would that be... That'd be crazy. Would that be insane? You know, I might have to experiment with that after I do like my actual wrap up with like hair and makeup and all that and talk about the pattern as is. Um, so if you want to see potentially how that goes, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram over at Thread and Needlefish. That's where I post all kinds of behind the scenes stuff and weird experimentation like this. So I think I might, I think that I might be onto something there. I think I might have something. I'm just really enamored with these pockets, honestly. So here is the finished dress, all dolled up, ready to go, kind of giving you an idea of what this might look like if you wore it for a night out, when we can eventually go for nights out again. Yeah. So I do have a regular bra on, I don't know if you can see, but because of my dimensions, I need a decent amount of support up in the boobage area, and in order to wear a strapless dress like this, I need to wear some form of like corselet or like actual bustier that can support me from underneath. Um, in theory, dresses with boning should be able to do that on their own, but we all kind of know just in reality that doesn't really work. So you can see that I have made these two little darts up at the top. I kind of took those in last night. So the skirt isn't as slim as I would like. I would like it to kind of go straight down and like maybe taper in just the slightest bit all the way around, uh, which considering I had to take in the back of the bodice by about two inches on each side to make it fit properly, I think if I did the same thing and um, kind of made a two inch additional seam allowance in the back and sewed it together, I think it would look a little bit nicer. So if you want to see a couple, you know, potential things I might be doing to fix this dress, go ahead and follow me over on Thread and Needlefish over on Instagram. You'll see all kinds of fun stuff. I do plan on kind of fiddling with this dress a bit because I might be making this for a friend's wedding that hopefully is still going to happen, but we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Because here in uh, January 2021, it's um, it's a time. All right, so let's start talking about the recap of Simplicity 8876, this cute little sheath dress. Um, so in general, I like how it turned out. I think this is a really cute dress. This dress is maybe not the most flattering for my body type. I am kind of a little bit more curvy and dresses like this uh, do tend to look a little bit better on people who have a little bit more of a straight silhouette as kind of a lot of patterns from the 1940s do, and this is a 1940s vintage pattern. So what do I think about the pattern? I think this pattern was, I think it was patterned very well. I think that all of the pieces really make sense. They all line up with each other very well. I think that they went together very quickly and very easily. Um, I had the overwhelming majority of this dress done in 
if I wasn't stopping and talking to the camera, I probably would have had most of this done within about three hours, if that. So again, this pattern as it is, isn't particularly difficult. And if you are the kind of person that is a little bit more straight up and down and doesn't have a whole lot of curves, um, I think this pattern will fit you very well. That being said, if you are like me and you do have a little bit more to work with, um, be prepared to make some adjustments to the pattern at different places. But the good thing is this pattern has a lot of darts, it has a lot of pleats. And the good thing about that means that there are a lot of opportunities for you to take in and let out specific parts of the garment as you need to. So you know if you have a little bit of a bigger chest and a bigger rib cage, you can take in less fabric at the darts and you can make the darts a little bit narrower. But if doing a little bit of math, you can still make the darts in the same place so that they'll line up properly with the pleats on the skirt. And it's a really similar thing to what I did up here because at the top it didn't really fit me particularly well so I had to make some quick little uh, pleats right here to take the top and make it fold in a little bit so that my, my boobs are more contained and I'm not pulling a, a Jane Mansfield whenever I, I would wear this. But overall in general I wouldn't necessarily call this a beginner friendly pattern. Um, but I think if you are someone who's relatively new to sewing, but you've made a couple of garments and you're ready to kind of step up and maybe kind of level up your skills a little bit and you want to try to challenge yourself with these pockets, I would say this is a very good pattern. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, because of all the darts, this pattern is very adjustable. You can take in more fabric, you can let out more fabric at different points in the dress if you need to to be able to make it fit better. That being said, it is kind of hard to make those adjustments on yourself. So if you don't have somebody around you who can help you pin things on your exact body, or if you don't have like a mannequin or a dress form that's made to your exact measurements, it might be a little bit hard to kind of perfect those little nits and tucks to make sure that you have everything exactly where they should be. Also, I don't know if it's just kind of like a scaling issue or if that's just kind of how like larger sizes are patterned based on the standard measurements. I did find that the whole thing didn't really fit a human shape. When I scaled it up to a size 20, I don't know if it's just because I had to do it myself. I don't know if maybe once you get to the larger sizes things change a little bit, but I'm kind of noticing in general that a lot of these patterns don't really translate well to the larger sizes. Like I'm not going to unpin them right now because I want to remember where this is now, but I basically had a crumb catcher neckline at the top and it's it just was a tube and it went up. And I don't know anybody whose boobs just are straight and flat and just go straight up and down. So overall pros of this pattern, it was really easy to put together, it was really quick to put together. There are a lot of opportunities for adjustment and for alteration to make it really fit you properly. Cons of this pattern is if you really don't have this body type, it may not look as good on you as you hope. I mean that's kind of just in general with plus sizes, you never, you never quite look as good as you hope you do. But anyway, especially with these more straight sheath silhouettes, they tend to look better on people who are thinner or people who have that kind of up and down body shape. They don't really look good on people with curves. So, so the way that this pattern is currently drafted straight out of the envelope, it's not great for plus sizes, it's not great for the larger sizes, but again, with these opportunities for nips and tucks and dart manipulation, you can make it fit very well. Which another tip that I kind of generally use is if I have a pattern that I know I'm going to be manipulating or might think that I might have to manipulate and if I don't want to make a full mock-up I usually will do the lining first and I'll make all of my adjustments on the lining so that way in case I have to rip something out or reseam something um, and it might leave some little like needle marks in the fabric and little holes um, that way it's in the lining and you know what no one's gonna see it most likely. Uh, so you can kind of get all of that out the way before you work on your main fabric. This is also a pattern where if you are making this and hemming this on yourself, you will probably want to wait until the very end to hem this. I think the instructions have you do this last, but you do want to have some sort of way of marking a level hem because since this is more of a straighter silhouette, the back will tend to rise up over your booty. Um, and the front will kind of tend to be lower. So if you have a way to mark a straight even hem and do that at the last step, go ahead and do that. Again, this hem isn't particularly wide or particularly long. So if you wanted to do it by hand, it would be, it would be pretty easy to do. It would, you'd be done with it pretty quick. Oh, this pattern does also call for a waist stay, which I didn't do and I didn't talk about anywhere in the um, instructions. Basically what a waist stay is, if you don't know, is a piece of non-stretch ribbon 
and you sew it into the waistline of your garment and what that does is that ribbon goes around the tightest part of your waist and the tightest part of the garment and that will take all of the stress um, from your body kind of wanting to push against it as you move and expand and breathe and eat and all that fun stuff. But the ribbon will take the stress of that movement so that the skirt or the dress itself doesn't, so you don't have to worry about putting a whole lot of pressure on these seams. So that allows you to make really tight garments and you don't have to worry about popping out of them in the middle of I don't know, a wedding. And that about wraps everything up. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was educational or entertaining or, you know, even if you just wanted to have something on in the background while you're sewing, because I definitely do that all the time. Or if you are hoping to make this pattern, I hope this helped you. I hope this, I hope maybe this gave you a little bit of guidance, a little bit of places to look out for, a little bit of, um, incentive to maybe make a mock-up or at least start on the lining and really work to get that perfect fit because with this pattern I think you can get a really really close perfect fit. You just need to fiddle with it a little bit. And normally I just kind of do these in whatever order I feel like but I did have a request to work on some overalls next so my next mock-up Monday mayhem madness menagerie will be on those very famous simplicity reproduction overalls which I'm really looking forward to because I'm kind of into overalls now and I can't find any that fit because of my long torso. So I'm looking forward to the uh, prospect of making my own. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I really spent two and a half hours doing hair and makeup to film for 10 minutes. Did you just die on me? I have no idea what that noise was about that. Okay. Why are you rubbing on my trash box? Hi! Are you helping? Thank you. Thank you for helping. She says, Mom, it's bedtime, but she doesn't know I slept for three hours today. Alright. Oh, you're not done? Lil's mom's busy. I'm busy. Here's the star of the show. I can't do anything unless you say so. Oh, I have something on your blanket. That's the matter. That's the matter. There's something on your blanket. I can fix that. Here you go. There you go. Here's your blanket. So you can lie on that. I'm not in my way. No. No. See, unfortunately, her favorite toy is tissue paper. It's not a toy. Okay, I'm going to put you on your blanket, okay? I'm going to put you on your blanket. <laughs>